This is Chesapeake Motorworks, and today we freshen up the engine and begin to swap in the manual transmission pedal set. We start out freshening the motor by removing the coils so that we can then remove the valve cover and replace the gasket. I got the coil packs out. I think this engine is actually very well cared for. There's no oil leaks on it right now, but I know it hasn't been done since I purchased the car and you first saw it in the very first video on this channel. So this is definitely the opportune time to do it. We've also got some more parts done here. These are eBay equal length headers. If you might as well do them while the engine's out and it's easy. And of course we've got the valve cover gasket. Now, one of the things I messed up is when you buy this, they don't come with grommets. So you get the valve cover set here and it kind of goes around the outside and the spark plug wells, but you also need the grommets that go around these bolts here. So thankfully, I have a billion of these cars, so I actually already had a grommet set. This actually is for the 540 that I ordered a while back, and these are the exact same part number that these engines use as well. But don't forget these. The valve cover's off, and let me tell you, this engine looks amazing inside. I forget the exact miles on this. The odometer is swapped in this car. We believe it's at least 200 some thousand miles and probably more like 300,000 miles. But just look at this. Whoever owned this before definitely kept up on the maintenance. The new gasket's ready to go on. You can see I did RTV the corners, basically where the mating surfaces are for the timing cover and the head and then these back half moons like you're supposed to. And right back here, new gaskets on. I can tell you the gasket I pulled off was basically brand new and it was made by L-Ring. So if I was gonna do this again, I'm putting a Victor Rain's gasket on, but I'd probably go back with L-Ring. So I took the intake off and I was making sure there's nothing down here. See, that's like a leaf, that's not a big deal and I'll clean it up before I get it out. The one that's interesting is this one. If you see down there is this object with a blue line on it. That's a seashell. I have no idea how a seashell got down here. This uh, looks good. Here, you can see down there is a green injector cap. I expected that because one of the injectors, when it came off, lost its cap. So that's actually part of what I was checking for and this one's clean. You can also see underneath it here, all of this is a bit of a contraption. I think what I'm gonna try and do is see how the M50 works and convert most of this over to the M50 style. So I kinda of wanna eliminate this CCV setup. Then the intake itself probably wasn't sealed very well. It looks like the throttle body here, this gasket, is the same diameter as the M50, as far as I can tell. We'll check that later. But what the previous owner did and doesn't work very well is they filled in the groove for the M50 gasket on the M50 manifold and then set the M52 throttle body on top of it. You can see they had issues because they tried to seal it up. So we're gonna fix that properly. The other thing I was checking under here is to see what I needed to order. Definitely these heater hoses back here and I think the uh, throttle body heater hoses as well. The last thing I want to do is try to see if these injectors are the same size as M50 injectors. If they are, then I can swap the M50 fuel rail over, which I conveniently have over here. I can pull the entire fuel rail assembly off of this. The headers are on. One thing to note is the O2 sensor on this first bank will not clear. It runs into this drain plug back here. It's too long, so I want to relocate that. But we're making progress. Then we have to take this bracket off. I'm gonna cut into the floor to see if um, this is just a single layer of metal or if it's doubled up here, which will tell me if I'm able to spot weld this in on the convertible without pulling the carpet. I removed the line that goes up here. It goes behind here where you can't see. And it's very difficult to get to. So I can get my hand back there. And it's all the way back here where the fitting comes out through the firewall underneath this brake booster. 
Now the problem is, if the steering linkage is in place, you can't get your hand back here. And it was kind of stuck. It goes on with a clip that I've managed to lose when I popped it off because it went that way. So I'm going to have to try and locate that or just buy a new one if I can find it. The steering linkage took me about an hour to get off the car. The bolt does have to be removed. There's a groove right here, but even with it removed and trying to expand this out, the fitting is really, really stuck on there. And I kind of did a combination of trying to press it out from the front between this U-joint and where the shaft comes through and just kind of beating on it. But I did eventually get it off. After that, I removed this bracket as promised. You can see this is the carpet back here. So it is not doubled up, it is one layer of metal. I just got done moving everything around the shop with the help of a friend and I lost my phone. So where was it? It was 12 feet in the air with on top of the convertible with the, in the air on the lift. So just thought that was funny, but you can see we've got more space over here now. Kind of wheeling the engine around and everything. So at the moment, the next steps here are the subframe has to get dropped back out of the convertible and I have to start swapping the pedal set and the throttle cable and everything over so that will work with the new engine. I pulled the driver's side seat out of the convertible so that we can get access to the pedal set and that's going to be pretty challenging. We have to remove the under panels under here. And I also need to remove the carpet because I need to weld right back here and we don't want to burn the carpet in this. The carpet's certainly cleaner. Now I get to get on my back with a flashlight and start trying to take the stuff apart. I'm making solid progress here. So I got this under panel off, kick panel off, the side piece is off. And to take these things off, this car has been apart so many times, some of it's broken, but this actually, it slides forward, I believe, and then it just comes right off these clips. When you take your kick panel off, you have to remove the hood release, and it just slides back, and that gives you room to pull this panel off. This is supposed to be anchored back here, but it's all broken on this car. And then your shifter has a set screw in the top right here, you back that out and then it just pops off, it's pretty easy. So, uh, slowly working my way through this. These pop out, you stick your finger through, if you look in this, it's got a hole up there, and you just, you pop your finger right through the back of it and you pop the onboard computer out, if it's equipped, then you can pop the tray out and just disconnect the electrical wires. The ground for the Cigarette lighter it goes on the outside, and the insulated terminal goes on the inside. I think there's some screws holding this in right there. You can see one. I'm gonna try and take those out and see if we can't take the entire center center console apart. The shifter is out. It's a massive pain in the butt to get to this point. There are screws attached up like here and back here that you have to remove. To do that, you have to make this piece loose. If you don't want to break that black center piece, you can see these two tabs down here have previously been broken. So to do that, you have to pull your center console apart. There's two screws here that hold the pocket in, then a center screw underneath, and then over here, a center screw right there that would have been located inside where the black plastic area is. Once that's loose, you can just slide it back and that exposes a 10 millimeter plastic nut right here, and that loosens this whole thing. So yeah, that's a whole lot of work to get to it. The automatic shifter comes right out, basically just find all the bolts, take them out, and pull the thing out. So no magic there. And that exposes the hole for the manual transmission. You can leave all the electrical cables in there, and the shift interlock cable here that I think runs up to the key that can technically be left in place and just tucked out of the way. I ordered pretty much new everything. So this is an entirely new clutch pedal. They're composite on these cars, so I figure it wouldn't hurt to get a new one. New clutch pedal pad, new gas pedal, 
old gas pedal is out so that we can move the carpet out of the way. We also have a little bit better access to stuff. If I can get up under this dash here in a second. The factory pedal set under here. You can see this is all kinds of fun. But it has the mounting boss in it for the clutch pedal. So we can actually use the same bracket setup. I'm going to switch the brake pedal out because they are different. And I got the, the accelerator cable out as well. You kind of have to push it up from underneath the floor in that hole up there. Push it through. So that's all kinds of fun. And taking the seat out is 100% the right move. If we come up here, you can see this is the new accelerator cable. And it goes into the hole right there, which is what you just saw from underneath the dash. 